delight it is seeing everybody. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Now, if you need a delicious way to get some greens into ya, have I got the recipe for you. So today we are making my light and crispy spinach spanakopita. Really good. Honestly, I make this so frequently when I'm just like, Mary, enough with the starch. Add some greens into your diet. So to get started, I've got one yellow onion here that I'm just gonna dice up. Now, you can use any sort of onion you've got hanging around. Yellow onions are my typical go-to for cooking because they're cheap, they cook down really nicely, they've got a good amount of sugar in them, and they taste really oniony, you know? Which is always a good thing. Also, I'm not gonna lie, I like that they come in that like weird yellow fishnet bag. <laughs> Easy to hold on to, which is always good. Now I'm gonna add that onion on into a pan over medium heat with a couple tablespoons of oil in there. I got the rest of that onion here, toss that in. And then I'm also gonna season that up with a little bit of salt and pepper. Now that salt is gonna start kind of drawing a little bit of that moisture out of those onions. So at this point, it's not necessarily for flavor, it's more to just help those onions cook down and get golden brown a little bit quicker. So give those a bit of a toss. The pepper is just for flavor, but you know, who doesn't love salt and pepper together? So give that a stir. And I just want that to cook down for about five minutes. While those onions do their thing, I'm gonna get to work on the green mixture. So I've got in this colander kind of thing here, some spinach. And anytime I'm making spanakopita, I wanna use frozen spinach, cause you need 500 grams which if you've ever bought fresh spinach, that would be like your whole trunk of your car. <laughs> Too much spinach. So if you buy frozen, it's cheaper, super simple. All you need to do is thaw it overnight and then just grab it in some paper towel and give it a squeeze to get most of that water out of there. Essentially you're looking for, kind of like a, like, a, like a little dumpling, but it's essentially just like a soft ball of some spinach that you're gonna throw into a bowl. And then into there, we're gonna start flavoring this up. But to bind everything together, I'm gonna add in one egg. That's gonna just kind of hold that filling together. And then for some flavoring, I wanna add in some herbs. So the first thing I need is about a quarter cup of dill and two tablespoons of parsley. Now dill is like a classic ingredient in a lot of Greek cooking. It's really nice and bright and fresh. Fun fact, my mom says she doesn't like dill, yet dill pickles are her favorite food. <laughs> so I'm not sure what she thinks dill tastes like, cause it tastes like a pickle kinda. So I'm just gonna chop that up. You can go fine, you can go rough, whatever floats your boat. And I'm gonna toss that on into that spinach. That's even more green power, which is always a good thing when I'm craving some vegetables. Now, for more flavor, I'm also gonna add in about half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes. If you're a little heat weary, feel free to pull this back a little bit, but I like that spice. And then for some brightness, I wanna add in the zest and juice of a lemon. That's gonna bring in that like classic bright lemon flavor from that zest. And then the juice kind of just cuts through the uh, greenness of that spinach. Just makes it taste nice and bright and fresh. So add that zest on in. And I love my zester, I'm not gonna lie. This thing, I put this thing to work every single day in my kitchen. It's my number one go-to. All right, now add in the juice. Ugh. I hate it when I get seeds. You feel like you win the kitchen lottery when you get a lemon with no seeds in it, I'm not gonna lie. I'll just pop it through that strainer. Oh, it's a good juicy lemon though. Okay, I'm not complaining. I retract my earlier complaint because it's an easy to squeeze lemon. Perfect. Now, a final little note of flavor in here is just the tiniest bit of nutmeg, which sounds kind of strange, but nutmeg and spinach goes together so, so beautifully. Just freshly grated right over top. If all you have is the pre-ground stuff, that'll work too. You just want a tiny little pinch. This gives almost like a lemony, kind of toasty warmness into this filling. Nutmeg is like the weird spice that you think it's pumpkin pie, but then it goes so well in savory dishes as well. It's really, really good. Now I'm gonna give that a little bit of a mix up just to break everything up. And already that looks healthy, am I right? Which is a good thing. Now over here, I've got those onions. I'd cook them down a little bit more, but I'm also gonna throw in a garlic clove, just minced right over top. That just little bit of heat from that pan is gonna lightly cook this garlic, just take away that kind of really kind of sharp spiciness. So just add that on in. 
And I don't know if it's just me, I've said it before, I'll say it again, garlic cloves are getting real big. <laughs> They're like the size of a softball, not the worst thing in the world. Now, I'm gonna remove this from the heat and add this onion on into this mixture. That garlic has just touched that heat, cooked off that raw flavor a little bit. Give that a stir together. And already this looks absolutely beautiful. That egg is kind of incorporated into everything. And again, that's just for binding, but it does add a little extra protein, which is always a good thing. Honestly, I've made this filling and I've put it into store-bought pizza dough and made almost like Spanakopita cinnamon buns. But without the cinnamon, don't worry, I'm not that weird. <laughs> There's nutmeg in them, but not that. It's really, really great. Now, obviously the final thing I need to add in is 200 grams of feta cheese what I call the salt of the cheese world. So just add that on in. You can amp that up if you wanna really go cheesy. Feel free to put more cheese in there. You can also pull back. I'm just stirring that together. This is gonna be so delicious. my light and crispy spinach spanakopita. It's basically like a Greek spinach pie, and it is so good, especially for those times when you're like, okay, Mary, you need to eat some more vegetables. So I've got all that green situation done with all that delicious feta cheese in there, and it smells out of control. Those herbs, oh my gosh, so bright and fresh. And then for the crust of this pie, you wanna use phyllo dough. And once again, just like for that spinach, I'm turning to the freezer section because I'm never gonna ask you to make phyllo dough because I do not know how any human person gets something this thin. <laughs> like it's like a piece of paper. It is super lovely though. It's really nice and flaky and crispy, but I know a lot of people get nervous because they think it's temperamental and it's gonna rip and tear. But honestly, all that does is give you more flaky layers. So for this recipe, I need 10 sheets and I've already got eight in here, just nice and layered. Now, one thing you do have to add to phyllo is a little bit of fat, whether that's oil or butter. So I've got a third of a cup of butter that I've just spread all over this phyllo. And you wanna spread it between each layer because this gives it that like crispy little bit of lift onto there. So just dot that over. And then I'm just gonna pop this on into that pan. And essentially when I'm layering this in, you don't have to be precious about it. Just get it in there. I like to lay the first couple layers right across the bottom, but then the next ones I kind of do off center to give a little bit more room for that crust, which I mean, who doesn't love crust, right? Actually, my best friend Kyle never eats his pizza crust and I always back clean up on that. <laughs> I'm not putting that to waste, it's a good thing. Now, I'm just gonna pop that final sheet onto here. And again, if you start ripping it or tearing it, don't worry, just gonna make more layers. So I'm done with that phyllo. And now we get to stuff this baby. So grab all of that delicious spinach and feta filling and just dump it right on into that beautiful pastry. It smells so good. That dill is like out of control. Pop that in. Now to form this, all I need to do is lift those edges up and just kind of crumple them over. You can leave a little bit of the center exposed or cover it all the way. Use a little bit, see how easy that was? And there's a pie. <laughs> way easier than any other pastry. Now I'm just gonna dot a little extra butter right on top. And then this baby needs to go into my 350 degree oven for about 40 to 50 minutes or until it is golden brown. And luckily we got one done because it smells good. Oh my gosh, it is so crispy and flaky. I mean, look at that little number. Totally beautiful. So now, just release that pan. This is why I do it in a spring form. You can also do it in a cake pan though. Slide that baby right off of there. Now, spoiler alert, that oven wasn't on, so I can touch this. Don't do this <laughs> at home. And then get ready for the crunchiest pie you'll ever hear. Oh yeah, just cut a slice of that. This served up as is, is a total dream. <laughs> Little bit of tzatziki on the side of there. And if you're in my house, we like to eat our spanakopita by hand. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.